this keyboard is actually kind of awesome. The AK820 Pro is a customizable keyboard in my favorite 75% form factor. This means it retains all of the features of a TKL while taking up less precious desk space, which is always good for us gamers. I opted for the Flying Fish or Fly Fish, depending on who you ask, and I think they sound and feel great. But if these aren't to your liking, Ajaz also make this keyboard with gift linear switches. But better yet, if you're not a fan of either of these switches, you can always change them because it's a hot swappable PCB and it will take either three or five pin switches. So say if you wanted to upgrade to Gateron Yellows, which is something I might be doing soon, that's always an opportunity for you. There's three ways of connecting this keyboard to your PC or Mac, as it does support Mac as well. The first one being a 2.4 gigahertz with a receiver, which connects seamlessly to my PC with no issues. There's also Bluetooth as well for the second wireless connectivity method, which is something I wouldn't really recommend if you can use 2.4 gigahertz, but if you just need to use Bluetooth, I mean, it's fine enough, but you will be having a bit of a latency penalty there, so I don't recommend it for gaming. Lastly, the more conventional way of connecting it to your PC is using a USB-C cable, like this beautiful yellow aviator coiled cable I've got, which looks quite nice in my setup and it matches the keyboard aesthetics as well. So that is probably the best way to connect it, in my opinion, with the USB-C cable. And this is also used to charge it as well. So the features are pretty decent, but what is the build quality like at just $60? This keyboard is, well, for the price tag, the build quality is fine. It's all plastic, but then again, at this price point, are you really going to be expecting like aluminium or machined aluminium for that matter? No, you're not really going to be getting that in a keyboard which costs this amount of money. However, though, there are rubber feet on the bottom which stops it from sliding around and it is also adjustable with a stand at the back as well. So depending on how you like your typing position, you can adjust it by, well, free. You can have it either flat, the small legs and the big legs, if that makes sense, it will be in the B-roll. Continuing with the positive notes and the keycaps are double shot PBT. So this is one of the best keycap materials which is more resistant to wear than the regular abs plastic so that's a good thing right there as well and as the switches it is a gasket mounted pcb and there is some foam in there as well which makes it sound quite good um to be honest i've only started to get into keyboards recently so i'm not sure as to why a gasket mount is good but I'm, i'll put a reason on the screen it wouldn't be a gaming keyboard if it didn't have RGB and good news, this thing has a lot of RGB. It has south facing LEDs which is good because it's more compatible with the Cherry MX Profile switches which is the most common type. So there won't be any compatibility issues there with RGB lighting. And if you wanted to control the RGB, good news, you don't even need to install software because you can control it fully on the keyboard. All you do is press FN and the volume knob. Yeah, I'm from the UK, that word also means something else. But here you can go through all of your lighting effects. So say if you wanted the rainbow RGB, that's on it by default. But if you wanted a solid color like me, because I don't like flashing lights all over the place, you can obviously choose that as well. I've left it on like an orangey yellow to match the rest of my setup and the rest of the keyboard and the aviator cable and I think it looks pretty good. But say if you wanted a typing RGB experience where like it would light up every time you type, that's also a possibility as well. And in the keyboard control as well, you can also adjust the brightness and the speed of lighting effects as well. So if it's a bit too bright at night, you can turn that down as well. So it's fully customizable without the software. Speaking of the software, I couldn't really find anywhere to download it. I looked on the product page and I couldn't find it. Let me know if I'm just being a bit of a fool or an idiot that I can't find it properly, but 
I just couldn't find it for some reason. But to be honest, I'm not really that bothered because I've got the keyboard set up exactly how I want it to be set up. The one thing you do need the software for though, to my knowledge, is you can upload GIFs to the little screen on it and you need it to change the time zone. I believe the time zone is set to Shanghai on it right now, as it is showing at, well, nine o'clock at night where it's, it's 10 past one here. So yeah, the clock is probably in the Shanghai time zone, not GMT. So if you wanted to upload GIFs to it or change the time zone, you need the software installed. It's all good a keyboard having features like RGB lighting, a nice little screen and looking pretty decent if the typing experience isn't great. But good news, for me especially, the typing experience has been absolutely awesome. I feel like my words per minute have gone up on this keyboard even though my typing test is pretty bad but to be honest I've always been terrible at typing tests. But I do feel like I'm able to get work done quicker on this keyboard compared to my Keychron. K2. With that keyboard it always felt like it was a bit too cramped even though it was a 75% just like this but typing on this has been absolutely brilliant and to be honest I kind of actually want to do Word documents now because I like typing on it so much. So it's very important you get a keyboard which suits you as it drastically boosts your productivity. Just like typing, gaming on this keyboard is perfectly fine. The Flying Fish linear switches are great for gaming, but they can't make up for a lack of skill as you're probably seeing in the B-roll right now. But it's nothing to do with the keyboard, that's just me, because as a gaming companion, this board is totally fine. Also, I'd much rather have a keyboard like this than a full size one because it will take up less space on your desk. So you can play at lower sensitivities, which is a thing amongst PC gamers. We all play at lower sensitivities. I know I do at least, so there is that. The overall use experience for gaming and typing has been great. There's been no weird ghosting or double pressing issues, which I've had in the past on other keyboards. So it's reliable, it performs well, and it looks great as well. So overall, in both the looks and performance department, this keyboard is pretty great in my opinion. I'm actually really happy with it and I don't see myself changing it out anytime soon, mainly because it's perfect for my needs. I might change the switches sometime soon to Gateron Pro Yellows as they are supposed to be one of the better switches from what I'm led to believe, but that's not out of necessity because I think the Flying Fish linear switches are actually quite good. I just want to broaden my horizons with different keyboard switches and different keyboards and that because I have only started to get into keyboards and I want to see what's the best. Right then, other than that, I think this keyboard is excellent value, especially at around the $60 mark. And I'd recommend it to anyone who is after a budget oriented keyboard, but they don't really want to lack on features that much. And I'd much rather recommend this over something from Corsair or Logitech or something like that, because I've used both their keyboards and this one is better than say Corsair K70 for the most part, because that is made out of better materials, but yeah. This one costs a lot less, which is to be known. So yeah, to answer the question at the start of the video, it's staying in my setup, it's not going anywhere like it has done for the past month or two because it's been here quite a while. I wanted to use it quite a bit before I made this video. I might mod it, as I've said, with the Gateron Pro Yellows or I might put more foam in it or something like that because that's what keyboard enthusiasts do. So I'll be looking into that. So if you wanna see more content around keyboards and this keyboard in particular, let me know in the comments down below. But if you want to see some other tech videos, there are two videos right up here, which might be right up your alley. And I'll catch you in the next one and have a good rest of your day.